For the second Saturday this child month, our country's youngest are the focus of Jamaica Magazine. We are securing the future now for the next generation. I'm studying general agriculture. I want to be a veterinarian. Uh, bioengineer. I want to manage my own agricultural business. I'm Theodore Henry. Let's get right to it. The poor, disabled, elderly, and everyday hardworking Jamaicans trying to eke out a living with dignity. They are all receiving attention under the Ministry of Labor and Social Security's development plan for the current fiscal year. Oh, children are also in the mix. We are focused on securing strong, inclusive growth and development. We are focused on ensuring that our vulnerable and needy citizens are cared for, protected and empowered. We are indeed securing the future now for the next generation. must ensure that all workers, including domestic workers, hotel workers, administrative security guards, managers, janitorial workers, or construction workers, that they are protected. It means working to pass critical legislation like the Occupational Safety and Health Bill. This groundbreaking legislation is expected to provide a comprehensive framework for the protection and promotion of health and safety in the workplace. The Employment Agency's Regulation Act will be reviewed to address the various methods being used to attract and lure job seekers into fraudulent employment schemes. For those in legitimate jobs... This year, we are taking steps to amend the Labour Officers' Powers Act to further strengthen the capacity of Labour Officers to carry out inspections to ensure compliance with Labour laws. We have gone even further and we are working with the Minister of Finance and the Public Service to include labour clauses in the standard bidding documents and government contracts. Mr. Speaker, the government of Jamaica must lead by example. The Prime Minister exhibited that leadership last year when he submitted the instrument for Jamaica to ratify the ILO Convention on Domestic Workers, C-189. The Ministry is now working to amend various pieces of legislation and introduce measures during this legislative year to support compliance with C-189. The 2017-2018 agenda is also about creating employment opportunities. The final report from the Labor Market Reform Commission, which is to be submitted to Cabinet by June 30, should help with that. So too, the 2017 Labor Market Survey, which the Minister tabled at the start of her sectoral presentation. More immediately, the International Labor Organization will support a program to train and certify persons in the informal economy so they can formalize their operations. And if you're looking to earn from the Canadian or U.S. farm work programs, a pre-selection exercise is planned for June 26 to July 24. It is important to point out that persons who are interested in participating in this program must have farming experience to boost their chances of success. Effective June 1st, there will be a 30% increase in the benefits paid to the approximately 360,000 registered beneficiaries of PATH. 
That's just the start of initiatives to improve social protection in this fiscal year. To promote better school attendance among PATH beneficiaries, the ministry is increasing its transportation allowance for high school students. Those transitioning to post-secondary institutions will get access to $120 million in bursaries and grants, and students already at the tertiary level can access $100 million. To mark PATH's 15th anniversary, $15 million in scholarships will be provided to students on the program in the next academic year. This is intellectual capital investment and we want to implore Jamaican families to secure the future now for the next generation by investing in their children's education. Send the children to school, encourage them to do well and the government will help to further their educational pursuits. We are securing the future now for the next generation in the disability arena. This month marks the start of a public awareness campaign on disability issues and the Disabilities Act. We will focus on the development of the first two codes of practice relating to the right to education and training and the right to employment. These codes will provide practical steps for the inclusion of persons with disabilities in institutions offering education and training and in various employment spaces. The ministry is also renovating its offices to improve access to persons with disabilities and will be training some frontline staff in sign language. Projections are that seniors will comprise approximately 16% of the total population by 2030 and 22% by 2050. It is therefore incumbent on us to be proactive and to ensure that the policy framework that supports the nation's seniors is relevant. So the revised national policy for senior citizens will be finalized and tabled as a green paper during the financial year. To improve pension benefits, the National Insurance Scheme is getting an additional $215 million to implement reform activities. It will include amending the law to allow for actuarial reviews every three years, revising all application forms, and the rollout of a new NIS card beginning June 1. A new IT system for the NIS will be introduced in the second quarter of the year, and new offices are being opened in Lucy and St. Anne's Bay. And the National Insurance Insurance funds governance structure, investment policies and asset allocation will be reformed. The National Insurance Fund, through the approved particip participating financial institutions, will increase the amount to unlend to the small business sector from $1.5 billion to $3 billion this year. So we are seeking to secure the future for the next generation through proactive investment activities. I reiterate that the government and the ministry are focused on implementing employment and social policies that will lead to decent jobs and living standards. We are securing the future now for the next generation. understand so I have to send your guy your auntie so you can go to school and turn out better than me. <laughs> if you or anyone you know has been a victim of human trafficking, call 811 or 1-888-PROTECT. Be wise, open your eyes, spot them, stop them. A message brought to you by the National Task Force Against Trafficking in Persons. You're watching Jamaica Magazine. Happy Child Month. The Statistical Institute of Jamaica, Statin, is in the final stages of completing Jamaica's second national survey on child labor. The findings will assist us in assessing the situation and provide insights on how to address this issue. Right now, let's check out what government is already doing to eradicate child labor. And later, the State Minister of Youth speaks out about speaking up. A 
It's a crime with many faces, destroying the future of our children. From the handcart or market boys to those working on the farms or at the fishing village, drug mules, prostitutes or nightclub dancers to street boys wiping windscreens, child labor takes many different forms which all amount to one thing. Activities that would deprive them of their educational opportunities, it would either cause them to leave school prematurely or they would be forced to combine both school and work. Putting our children to work is illegal and should never be allowed. Jamaica has joined forces with other countries to prevent and stop this abuse. The Child Labour Unit in the Ministry of Labour and Social Security plays an integral role in addressing issues of child labour. Its main focus? Preventing the engagement of children in work or activities that adversely affect their development. What we would consider to be unacceptable work, any process or any work that is morally, physically, psychologically harmful to the child. Jamaica is a signatory to the International Labour Organization conventions which deal with the worst forms of labour. Convention 138 provides for a minimum age for employment and Convention 182 sets out the rights of the child, a document which led to Jamaica's Child Care and Protection Act. Subsequently, we have had several more pieces of legislation which undergirds and addresses more directly some of the issues that we would consider to be the worst forms of child labor which would be commercial sexual exploitation and the general sexual exploitation of our children. We have signed on to the optional protocols to the Convention on the Rights of the Child and those spoke to um, uh, pornographic involvement. Under Jamaican law, no child under the age of 13 is supposed to be employed. However, between the ages of 13 and 15, they can be engaged in light work under conditions which are clearly defined by the ministry. Still, not all work is bad for children. Child labor should never be confused with normal activities or chores that may enhance their well-being. But the ministry officials say there is no room for complacency. Constant monitoring both by the authorities and the general public is essential. Enforcing the law is critical. The penalty for putting a child to work is significant. Persons can find themselves either before a resident magistrate and you can be fined uh, uh, 500,000 or you, it could be both. Find an imprisonment or a fine of up to $500,000 or six months in prison. It takes a village to raise a child. So let's be our brother's keeper and help stamp out child labor. How? When you identify a child that is obviously in a place where they're not supposed to be, that we take the responsibility to inquire, why are you here? If you see a child that is not attending school on a regular basis, they are somewhere else when they are supposed to be in school, it should raise a red flag that I probably should try and find out. And if you can confirm, not necessarily, but report to, to the relevant authorities that the necessary intervention can be undertaken. Children have a right to enjoy their childhood, a right to be protected from all forms of abuse. Let's protect them. Let's protect them. We have a subculture that supports those who do not inform. 
an anti-informal culture that pervades our entire society that we must break down. Let's lighten things up a bit. One of the first key um, achievements in terms of um, learning is to be able to read. Once you're able to read, knowledge is available to you. Good morning, children. Good morning. And how are you today? I am going to read a short story for you. Uh, what am I going to do? I'm going to read a... Uh, Dorian. So here goes. I love my planet Earth because it's a place that's covered in water and land. Anybody know what water is? You have water, see? All right, what else do you do with water? You drink it very well. So our planet Earth is where we live. All right? Our planet Earth is where we have school, right? Our planet Earth is where we have church, where we go to the beaches. Yes, that's all part of our planet Earth. One, two, three, four, five, Mommy says, if I drink my milk, I will grow big and strong. So everybody here is going to grow big and very good. So you're going to start at my knees, and then you're growing to my hips, and then to my ribs, and then very soon, you, you may be taller than I am. Much has been said about shining the spotlight on child abuse and leaving no shadows for perpetrators to find shade from our collective scorn and punishment where necessary. But we also want to shine the spotlight on the other story of our children being achievers and innovators, making real and lasting contributions to national development. Just look at how these youngsters are engineering agricultural innovation. I'm studying general agriculture. I want to be a veterinarian. A uh, bioengineer. I want to manage my own agricultural business. They are the future of the agriculture sector and are working towards making a significant impact. To have certain crops in Jamaica that are being depleted. I would like to re-engineer those crops and bring them back into the world. I'm planning to do something similar to this. Or if I can fine tune the same thing and re re rename it into a brand that I can, can, can offer to the economy, I want to do this. This is the Kisa model, a project that highlights an approach that can be taken by farmers to treat recycled water on their farms to irrigate field crops. The main purpose of, of this layout right here is to have an environment where we try to have less economic problems, try to build up a system that is economically and environmentally friendly. The idea and design came out of a need to implement such a system on the grounds of their Hanover-based agricultural school. 
The Nakalva students also believe that the Kisa model will be able to sustain farmers through periods of low rainfall and drought. Here is how it will work. Say you are a pig farmer. Each time you wash the pig pen, that water can be channeled to various treatment points. The water, along with the waste substance, will then pass through a biodigester, allowing you to produce your own energy for your farm as well as manure. In the biogas digester, anaerobic bacteria breaks down or digests the material and releases a gas known as uh, methane gas. This methane gas is then sent to the control station where um, our generator converts this gas into energy and is used up on the farm on a day-to-day -day basis. So after the biogas digester, the, 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 the solid part of the material is sent to the giant bed. In the giant bed, it is left open where it can be dry completely. After it is dried, the material is then used back in our outfield and in our greenhouse as organic material or manure. Following that is the water treatment process. The liquid from the giant pond is sent to the anaerobic pond, which is the first stage of treatment. In this pond, there's a substance known as BOD. BOD is biological chemical oxygen demand. This is the amount of oxygen that bacteria requires to break down organic matter. It is reduced by 85% in the anaerobic pond and in the second pond, which is the facultative pond, it is reduced by 95%. In the facultative pond, algae is present to add additional oxygen to the water by photosynthesis. And doing this, the algae also removes nitrates and phosphate, therefore purifying the water a little further. From here, water moves to maturation ponds one and two. This process is to move coliform bacteria. Anaerobic respiration occurs at the bottom of the pond. The main purpose is to reduce pathogens like bacteria, viruses, E. coli and no chlorine. Then it will travel in a channel to storage pond where the water stays there. This storage pond will also facilitate rainwater harvesting. This harvested water is used to lower the pH of the water stored in the storage pond and it, also, it is also used to spread out the level of pathogen in the water. This is done because there is a recommended level of pathogen per litre in the water and doing this will, just, will reduce the amount of concentration of pathogen in that specific litre. After the treatment of the water, it is then sent to the control station where the generator and pump is activated and, and it is dispersed into our outfields and in our greenhouse irrigation system. So this, I believe that this is the, one of the best ideas that all Jamaican farmers should, 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 should partake in. Not only that it is very beneficial to our economy, it is also beneficial to your pockets. To get this started, it is not really an easy process, but over a period of time you'll realize that because you are creating your own energy, you don't have to go ahead and um, buy water because you're the one reusing, recycling your water, you're the one harvesting your water, you're the one treating it, so you don't have to pay to do all of those processes. It is this application of technology and innovation within the agriculture sector that is being promoted by Portfolio Minister Carl Samuda. We have to become technology savvy and we have to introduce it at all elements of agriculture because that's the only way that we are going to be on the cutting edge of competition. And the Minister Samuda is encouraging young people to be part of this transformation by choosing areas of agriculture as careers. The future of Jamaica's agriculture must rely on the wisdom of the old but the energy of the young. They are the ones who are going to carry this process forward. It's time to revisit the top news stories of the week. Hi there, I'm Simone Wolf with your JIS News of the Week. 
Prime Minister Andrew Holness launched the Employment Aspect of the Housing Opportunities Production Employment HOPE program this week. The HOPE program will identify the youngsters, give them the necessary skills, bring them under an apprenticeship framework and set them to work in building a better, more efficient Jamaican public service. The Prime Minister also recently broke ground for the development of 150 service lots in the Chateau Gardens housing development in Clarendon. They will become available in the next 18 months and are among 565 housing solutions that will eventually be offered at the site. While in Clarendon, Prime Minister Holness reassured residents affected by recent flooding that government would provide support to get them back on their feet. The government uh, is sensitive, is aware of what has happened and will, within our limited budget, um, do our best effort to respond with assistance. On Wednesday, the Agriculture Ministry signed an agreement for $37.8 million in technical assistance from the European Union to support the sugar industry. This will be piloted as part of the EU's wider 2013 Sugar Accompanying Measures funding support to Jamaica, totaling $4.18 billion. The Agriculture Ministry also signed a 25-year lease agreement with Red Stripe for 247 hectares of land located in the Windsor Park and Worcester areas of St. Catherine. It is to facilitate the expansion of cassava production for use in the brewing of beer. This is an excellent start to something that I think is going to bear great fruit in the future. This relationship has the effect on our economy that we are all striving to realize. That is the reduction of imports and the expansion of employment opportunities. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade has taken ownership of a database capturing the location, interests and skills of members of the Jamaican diaspora. The database was developed under the Online Diaspora Mapping Project and funded by the International Organization for Migration, IOM. We intend to use it, utilize it as part of our future plans to develop a more robust and effective diaspora engagement strategy. Government launched Labor Day 2017 this week, announcing that activities would support and enhance the Jamaica 55 agenda. We're urging Jamaicans to clean up and beautify their environment and landmarks, including monuments, community centers, recreational parks, and public spaces that may be used to not only stage the celebrations, but which will renew the spirit of community and togetherness. There are to be two national projects. What has been selected this year as twin projects is the Ward Theater and the Central Police Station. And finally, garbage collection on the island has been bolstered with the addition of three new trucks to the National Solid Waste Management Authority's fleet. The trucks, valued at $60.2 million, will be dispatched to St. Elizabeth, Portland and the Kingston metropolitan area. This brings to nine the number of units received since the start of the year. And those were some of the stories making news this week. I'm Simone Wolf. I am your child. 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 No child is just your child. No child is just my child. Every child is Jamaica's future. Every you will come in like a man. We must do better. We are all our children. We packed all we could in this half hour package, but alas, time is up. Fret not, we have more to share on this station tomorrow. Till that time, the JIS website and YouTube channel are rich with content. They are just a click of your mouse away from your viewing pleasure. Get to watching and then share your thoughts. Our social media handles are on screen right now. Until next time, I'm Theodore Henry. Remember to protect our children and give them room to grow and excel.
This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.